AITA for wanting to break up with my boyfriend because of a cat. So, I'm 28, and I've been dating my boyfriend, who's 30, for about four years now. We live together and I have a cat, so naturally, the cat lives with us too. I had the cat long before we met, and my boyfriend seemed cool with it. He knew moving in with me meant living with the cat, and he didn't seem to have a problem with that at first. Overall, our relationship is really solid, except for this one issue. He's never lived with a cat before, so when he moved in, I gave him a quick rundown on some basic things like, don't let her lick garlic, and don't bring home lilies. I didn't make a big deal out of it, I just thought it was important for him to know. But over time, it's become clear that he doesn't really listen to me when it comes to these things. He leaves out bowls of food that contain garlic or other things that are toxic to cats. I'm not talking about just a few hours, I mean he leaves them out on the table or counter, uncovered, overnight. Whenever I see it, I clean up the dishes myself. But every so often, I try to remind him that it's not safe for the cat, especially with things like chocolate or citrus. I even go as far as asking him to just throw the dishes in the sink if he doesn't want to wash them. Honestly, I feel like I'm being really chill about this, but it's starting to get under my skin because this is the one thing I've asked him to be mindful of, and he just won't do it. What bothers me most is his laid-back attitude. He'll just shrug and say, my bad, I won't do it again, but then he does. Anyway, the final straw happened this past weekend when he threw a party to celebrate his promotion at work. One of his co-workers brought over a bouquet of flowers that included lilies. Lilies are deadly to cats. I'm guessing she didn't know we had a cat, and that's fine, I don't blame her. We thanked her for the flowers and I put them in a vase. After everyone left, I told my boyfriend that I was uncomfortable having lilies in the house and that we should keep them outside on the back patio or something. I even pulled up an article on Google explaining how just a few crumbs of lily pollen can kill a cat. They don't even have to eat the flower, they just have to brush past it. He asked if he could keep the flowers in our bedroom and just keep the door closed. I said sure, but he had to keep the door closed at all times to keep the cat safe. He said he understood. Well, it's been a week, and while he's mostly remembered to keep the door closed, I've had to shut it a few times myself because he forgot. Today, I came home from work, and he was sitting in the living room playing video games with the bedroom door wide open. I ran to the bedroom, and my cat was up on the dresser playing with the flowers. I freaked out, took her away from the flowers, shut the door, and started inspecting her for any signs of pollen. I was shaking. I called the emergency vet, not knowing if she had eaten any or if it was just on her fur. My boyfriend asked what was wrong, and I said, the bedroom door was open. All he said was, oh, sorry. At that point, I finally got mad. I told him that I didn't know if I could be in this relationship anymore if he couldn't take me seriously. He argued that it was stupid to consider ending our relationship over a cat. I think my cat is going to be fine, but it's too soon to know for sure. Lilies can kill cats within seven days, so I won't know for a week if she's truly safe. But honestly, it's not just about the cat. I feel like I've asked for really simple things and explained why they're important, but he doesn't seem to think they're worth remembering. I don't know if he doesn't take me seriously, if he thinks this cat stuff isn't actually dangerous, or if he just doesn't care. I'm fed up. His constant coolness and lack of concern make me feel like I might be the crazy one here, am I? But at the same time, I don't think I'm asking for much. I just wanted him to put dirty dishes in the sink or dishwasher and keep our bedroom door closed for one week while we had his flowers in the room. It's really not that hard. I don't understand why he refuses to put in more effort to remember these things. I can't tell if he's being intentionally negligent or if he's just stupid. It breaks my heart because this is literally one of our only disagreements, but it's obviously deeper than just the cat. What do you think? As I sit here reflecting on everything that's happened, I can't help but replay the last four years in my mind, trying to figure out where it all started to go wrong. When we first got together, I thought I had found the perfect partner. He was charming, considerate, and always made me feel like I was the most important person in the world. We had similar interests, enjoyed spending time together, and shared many of the same values. I remember thinking that this was the person I could see myself spending the rest of my life with. But now, I'm beginning to question whether that was ever really true, or if I just ignored the red flags because I was so in love. Before he moved in, I was fully prepared for the adjustments we'd have to make as a couple living together. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was committed to making it work. 
We talked about how we divide chores, manage finances, and handle conflicts. I even thought ahead about the potential challenges of him living with my cat, since he'd never had a pet cat before. I explained to him that cats are different from dogs, that they're more independent but also more sensitive in some ways. I went over the basics, like how garlic, chocolate, and certain flowers are toxic to cats, thinking that would be enough to make him aware and cautious. He assured me he understood, and I believed him. But once we started living together, little things began to bother me. At first I brushed them off as minor annoyances, figuring we were just getting used to each other's habits. He'd leave his dirty dishes on the counter, and I'd gently remind him to put them in the sink, explaining again that it wasn't safe for the cat. I thought it was just a matter of adjusting to a new routine, but as time went on, I noticed that he never seemed to take these requests seriously. No matter how many times I asked or how many times I explained the risks, he continued to do what he wanted, as if my concerns didn't matter. As time passed, this pattern kept repeating itself. I would bring up something that was important to me, he'd shrug it off, and I'd end up feeling more and more frustrated. It wasn't just about the cat anymore, it was about everything. It was about the way he would forget to take out the trash, even after I'd asked him three times. It was about how he'd leave his clothes all over the floor and then act surprised when I got upset about it. It was about how he never seemed to take any responsibility for the little things that kept our home running smoothly, and how that made me feel like I was carrying the weight of the relationship on my own. In that moment, everything I'd been holding in for the past four years came pouring out. I yelled at him for being irresponsible, for not listening to me, for putting our cat's life in danger. I told him that I didn't know if I could stay in a relationship with someone who didn't respect me enough to take my concerns seriously. And do you know what his response was? He just shrugged and said, it's just a cat. That was when I knew we were done. It wasn't just about the cat, it was about everything. It was about how he never seemed to take anything I said seriously, how he never seemed to care about the things that mattered to me, how he always brushed off my concerns, as if they were unimportant. I realized that I couldn't spend the rest of my life with someone who made me feel like I was overreacting for wanting to protect the things I cared about. I deserve to be with someone who respects me, who listens to me, and who values what I value. Breaking up with him isn't going to be easy. I still love him, and a part of me wishes things could be different. But I can't keep making excuses for him. I can't keep telling myself that he'll change, that he'll start listening, that he'll start caring. I've given him four years to show me that he's capable of being the partner I need, and he's shown me that he's not. So yeah, I'm breaking up with him because of a cat. But really, it's not just about the cat. It's about everything the cat represents. It's about respect, trust, and the willingness to put in the effort for the things that matter. And if he can't do that, then I have to move on. For my sake, and for the sake of my cat. AITA for being upset that my husband secretly recorded our argument. I, 26, and my husband, 28, am, have a one-year-old daughter named May. I am currently expecting our second child. I don't believe I'm at fault, but I acknowledge that this pregnancy is impacting my emotions. It's possible that I'm not seeing things clearly and that it's not such a big issue after all. To sum it up, my husband frequently perceives me as angry or annoyed when I'm not. This really upsets me. For example, when my husband was sitting on the couch watching F1, I told him, Okay, it's time for May to take a bath, if you want to watch the race till the end, it's fine, but it's pretty late, so May and I are going upstairs now. I wasn't upset, irritated, or trying to be confrontational. I was simply informing him that this time we wouldn't wait, just a few minutes until the race was over. Immediately, he hugged our daughter and said, See how angry mommy is? Don't worry baby, I will protect you. Another time I asked him if he could unload the dishwasher while I folded some laundry. His response was, Jesus, why are you so annoyed already? The events that occurred today seem unbelievable to me due to how they spiraled out of control. I attempted to redirect our robot vacuum to another room, but may close the door. I casually mentioned, you didn't have to close the door. I tried to guide the vacuum in the right direction, but it was too late, and it returned to the charging station. I sighed and started searching for my phone while commenting that I didn't know where I'd placed it. At this point, my husband chimed in, why are you always getting upset over trivial matters? I assured him I wasn't angry and requested him to desist from calling me that when I was not visibly upset. This led to a discussion during which he chuckled and repeatedly insisted that I should maintain positive energy, which started to frustrate me. 
I express my exhaustion at his tendency to portray me as emotionally unstable and to stop admonishing me for raising my voice at May when I simply set a clear boundary, I rarely raise my voice at her and never resort to physical discipline. I recounted the instances mentioned earlier to which he remarked, you're such an actress I'll record you. He aimed his phone's camera at me. It was absurd and it was apparent that he did it just to mock me, so I left the room while he chuckled and conversed with May about how mommy preferred to seclude herself rather than face her behavior. I returned about two minutes later. He still had his phone in hand, as he does most of the day, so I didn't think much of it. I began tidying up the kitchen while calmly continuing our discussion. Then I noticed his phone was positioned oddly, so I inquired if he was recording me. He began laughing and confirmed that he was. At that point, I burst into tears. I hadn't said or done anything to be ashamed of during his recording, but I felt embarrassed and disrespected. He remarked that I had no sense of humor, to which I retorted that it wasn't amusing. I left him with May to sit in my car for a while. He called after me to just calm down and come back. He believes I overreacted. Do you think I did? The general consensus was that he is emotionally abusive, and I believe that he is, but not the way he used to be. I have been with this man since we were both teenagers, and things have been great for more than five years. After we got married and he switched jobs, he became a completely different person, indifferent, ignoring me rolling his eyes whenever I opened my mouth, undermining my education and intelligence, making constant jokes at my expense. And when I asked him to stop, I was too sensitive and couldn't take a joke. Dead bedroom and mocking me whenever I tried to initiate. I stopped once he outright laughed at me. I tried everything to be the perfect wife, but nothing worked to get his positive attention. It probably wouldn't do the damage it did if it wasn't for the lockdown, and him being the only person I had contact with. I was left with no self-esteem and too scared to leave because no one would ever want me and I would be left alone without any chance of having a family. I tried to get him to couples therapy, but wasn't successful to this day. But things slowly got better once I turned my focus from him to myself and started to build myself again. He stopped with his jokes slash insults, started listening when I spoke, and started to respect me a bit. Our daughter was conceived on a vacation when everything seemed back to normal, but as soon as the severe morning sickness hit, he made sure to avoid me. I didn't know whether I would be a single mother until I gave birth, after both me and I almost died during labor, he finally stepped up and has been a great father and even a loving husband. Yes, discussing anything with him is impossible because he is always right and doesn't care about anyone else's opinion. He still has the urge to joke sometimes. But most of the time we get along well, we are friends again, having fun together. I learned to advocate for myself and call him out after talking to my husband. In my original post, I probably made that kind of behavior seem like a daily occurrence, but it is just something that happens repeatedly over some period of time. Apart from that, we have a reasonably happy family life. He is a good guy overall, always there to help anyone in need. Smart as hell, hardworking and providing for us. Our marriage is not very healthy, but I love him, we are good friends, and he is a great father. So, the update. In the evening after the event, I sat my husband down and tried to talk to him about what happened. It wasn't very pleasant, and I had to stop his movie multiple times because he just rolled his eyes told me I always come up with some bullshit and turn back to TV. But I didn't give up and ignored his smirks and remarks about how I make things up in my head, how I twist his words beyond recognition, and how I have no sense of humor. When he threw in the casual calm down, I just started laughing and asked him if he was serious. We got to the point when he finally let the shit go and talked seriously. I asked him if I truly came across as angry. He said I do. I tried to explain that I have more emotions than happiness and anger, and that I was just tired during the... I'll protect you incident, so I may have seemed blunt. He started laughing, and then my tiredness showed in a weird way. I asked if there was any way I could help him recognize my emotions better, and he said I should smile more. So I guess this is a lost cause lol. I asked him about his side of yesterday's story. I roll my eyes and sigh, all the time and radiate negative energy. I do not raise my voice, but it is about the tone. I always overreact over little things and start to complain. I supposedly slammed the door two times yesterday before he said anything. Eh. He wanted to record me to show me the face I make. To comment on this I get angry sometimes of course, and sometimes I have a shitty mood the whole day, but the point is that I think I am pretty aware of how I feel and act, and I own up to it. Surprisingly, he never points out that I am angry when I am actually angry, I am the one calling myself out. So yeah, people saying I am downplaying how I act are partially right. But I didn't see how sometimes being angry is connected to being called angry when I am not. But if my husband cannot differentiate between me being neutral slash tired and angry, the whole thing makes a lot more sense, and he must be thinking that he lives with an insufferable BTCH since this pregnancy makes me exhausted. 
It makes much more sense than living my life and hearing how angry I am out of nowhere lol. Then we talked about how he spoke about me with May according to him. That was just a joke, and even she could tell because she had a sense of humor. Unlike me I take myself too seriously, need to lighten up, and wouldn't survive a day in his office. I told him I don't care what type of humor goes around in his office. He is my husband and shouldn't want to do things that hurt me. We stuck on this for a long time, and he refused to stop, but I told him that this was a deal breaker for me, and that I would not tolerate it. We touched on what would happen if we separated. I asked him if he would want full custody. He said that, of course he would, but he would never separate me from me. He would let me have full custody and support me anyhow he could. So no, there is no grand scheme to take her from me and make me seem crazy in front of others. I truly don't believe he made the recording for a different reason than to put it on TV and stop in the moment I made some unappealing face to make fun of me. He is not an active contributor on social media. And there is no putting ideas in the heads of our family or friends. His family usually scolded him for never being home with us, so they would rather take my side. Conclusion I will not divorce him now, but thank you to all who are concerned about May and me. I will certainly read the book many of you recommended and try to educate myself on the topics. I will also try to educate myself on effective communication skills. I know he is gaslighting me often, mainly by changing the scenarios of past events. But the thing is that it never escalated. The emotional abuse appeared out of nowhere four years ago and has gotten better month by month since then. Am I naive to hope for better times? Maybe. But I know how inferior I felt four years ago and how confident I am now. I can see through his bullshit most of the time okay yesterday was rough but I feel it would have a completely different outcome today. Has anyone ever worked through this? Although I still think that his calling me angry was at least partially intentional, I will try to speak in a more pleasant tone when I am tired and sigh less. I will also work on not getting pressed by being called angry. I will stay cautious, and if I conclude we would be better off alone, I will file for divorce. If I sense any kind of danger, we will leave immediately, but I doubt that. I know we will be fine either way. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day. AI Tay for bringing up concerns about my cousin's baby name choice. My cousin Stephanie and I are more like friends than just family. It's worth mentioning that she's not really into social media or online stuff, so she's not familiar with certain memes or internet jokes, and honestly, she doesn't really get how viral internet things work. Stephanie is pregnant and recently found out she's having a girl. About a week ago, she told her close group of girlfriends that she's planning to name her daughter Karen. The room got awkwardly quiet, but after a moment, everyone else politely said the name was nice. I just couldn't say anything. Later that evening, when Stephanie was out of the room, the group started talking like, OMG, that poor kid, and why would she choose Karen of all names? I felt pretty uncomfortable with this, especially since they'd all been so positive about the name when she was around. I thought more about it over the next couple of days and just felt really weird about the whole thing. The name is really loaded, to the point it could be detrimental to the baby, and Stephanie had no idea of the connotations to make an informed decision. So a couple of days later, I tentatively brought it up. I told her I was so excited for the baby, and just wanted her to have all available information when picking a name. I then started to explain that Karen has some negative connotations, and has become sort of an internet joke to describe a specific kind of entitled middle-aged woman. Stephanie instantly was furious, and started talking over me, saying, Why are you saying this? This is so mean. I was really surprised by her reaction, it felt very, very out of character, so I immediately stopped and said, I'm really sorry I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, I just wanted to tell you something I thought you might not know. She replied, that's the name I picked for my daughter and you think I picked it as some kind of joke, I don't understand why you'd say something so hurtful. When she said that, I felt like it signaled that she didn't really understand what I was trying to tell her, so after agonizing for a second about whether to press the issue even though she was so angry, I felt like in for a penny, in for a pound, and since she was already mad, I wanted her to at least understand what I was trying to explain to her. I googled, Karen know your meme on my phone and tried to show her the screen of results while saying, look, I'm just saying that there's more meaning to the name than you may realize. She stood up, pushed my phone away, and shouted, Wow! She then stormed out of my home and drove away. My aunt and mom have been berating me all week because Stephanie told them that I made fun of her baby name. Stephanie has not spoken to me or responded to my text since. I can take a hint, and I'm not gonna broach a topic again that caused so much distress, but I keep going back and forth on whether I was tired by bringing it up in the first place. 
Edit, thanks everyone. I have been properly schooled and I accept my judgment that I was tie here. Stephanie and I have a history of being extremely open and honest with each other, I was the maid of honor in her wedding, which we planned on being the case from a young age, and we always joked as teenagers that part of my duties would include, hawking her out of the marriage if the groom she picked sucked, and so maybe I was too flippant with approaching this topic due to our history and was unempathetic in underestimating how much she was already invested in the name she chose for her future daughter. I admit I'm a bit frustrated that Stephanie still doesn't understand what I was trying to tell her. She still thinks I was making some kind of weird, cruel joke accusing her of picking the name as a joke, but I have messaged her a sincere apology that she accepted, and I will never speak of this again, to Stephanie or baby Karen. I'll also stand up for Stephanie if her other friends shit talk the name around me again. If they're not willing to voice their thoughts to Stephanie directly, they need to not say the kinds of things they were saying behind her back. Edit 2, one more thing. I definitely was not trying to tell Stephanie to not name her daughter Karen. I just wanted her to make the decision either way knowing the connotations. Since I want someone to do the same for me if I picked a baby name with cultural baggage I wasn't aware of. I realize now I handled it poorly and was hurtful to Stephanie in the process, but I just wanted to be clear that I wasn't actively trying to talk her out of the name. I just didn't want her to be blindsided if it came up later. Update Baby Karen was born healthy and happy back in October. She's an absolute sweetheart of a baby, and I'm totally in love with her. Between March and May, I didn't get to see her at all in person, but I was doing regular FaceTime slash house party calls with Stephanie and Karen, and over the last few weeks, I've been going over to Stephanie's house to sit in her backyard and chat with Stephanie slash coo at Karen from a lengthy distance. I have two reasons for updating. First, I've realized since Karen's birth that her name has taken on new meaning to me. When I'm with her, Karen just means her, and I don't think about the other connotations. In other words, you guys were right. That said though, my second reason for updating is that Stephanie got back into her year's unused Facebook at the beginning of the pandemic to keep in touch with people. She's been on it pretty regularly lately for the first time in years, historically, she's not really been into social media. Most people in our area slash social circle have been posting really heavily about BLM and the protests happening right now, as well as racial justice issues more generally. As a result, Stephanie has now come into contact with a deluge of Karen memes for the first time and found them confusing and horrifying, especially the use of Karen as shorthand for a racist. I've basically just declined to talk about it with Stephanie, because it went so poorly last time, but both my mother and her mother have hounded me about it because it's upsetting to Stephanie, and said things like, is this what you were talking about before? Why didn't you say so? Why didn't you explain it better? You should have told Stephanie. And Jesus wept. You really can't win. Thanks again for all your feedback on my last post. It was very helpful in giving me some zen about the situation. Edit. Wow, I've been super overwhelmed by the flood of very kind, heartfelt PMs and just one or two not-so-kind ones, as well as the comments on my other post. Thank you everyone. It continually amazes me how many nice and empathetic people frequent a sub devoted to assholes. Final update. First of all, baby Karen, not so much a baby anymore, is doing amazingly on her developmental milestones. She's a very bright child, sharp as the sharpest tack, and extremely tuned into her environment. Some of what she says is already fully in complete sentences, which just makes me want to cry when I hear it, because it seems like Stephanie was giving birth just yesterday. Karen loves books already, and will intently study the pictures in them for huge stretches of time, and claim to be reading. And you would not believe the uncomfortably incisive questions she's already asking. I am fully convinced this child is going to grow up to be an actual genius. Regarding the name, unfortunately, when Karen started daycare earlier this year, she started getting grief for her name pretty quickly from the older kids. The daycare she attends mixes the ages together at a couple of different points throughout the day, and while there fortunately wasn't much direct bullying, two of the age fives must have heard and internalized the derogatory connotations of the name Karen at home. As a result, they found her name absolutely hysterical, and they kind of spread the idea to the other kids that there was something funny slash wrong about her name. Karen was too little to understand what was happening, but found the other kids' behavior toward her generally upsetting. The daycare staff made every effort to shut it down and let Stephanie and her husband know right away. After about a month of this, where the daycare wasn't having much success putting the kibosh on this behavior, and the kids weren't dropping it, Stephanie and her husband made the decision that Karen would be going by Carrie from now on, which was already an established nickname that a lot of family and friends were already using and that Karen already recognized as referring to herself. 
Stephanie and I never really fully revisited what happened during her pregnancy, but when she was telling me about what was happening in daycare, she apologized to me. I immediately felt terrible and reassured her there was no reason to apologize. Emotions are complicated when you're pregnant, and then I thought having Karen go by Carrie was a great solution. Though changing what you're used to calling someone is fucking hard, I found, and I'm still directly addressing her on manual mode, every single time. A lot of the responses I got to my last post were gleeful and leaned into the schadenfreude of the situation, and I have to say those responses really bummed me out. I would much, much rather live in a world where I was wrong about the impact Karen's name would have on her. I cannot emphasize enough what a sweet disposition, smart, curious, loving little girl Carrie is, and how much she deserves every good thing in life. Also, a lot of people didn't like Stephanie in my last post, but I need you to understand that this is a tiny snapshot of a very emotionally high-strung time in her life, and overall, Stephanie is a wonderful lifelong friend. She has gotten me through so many personal crises over the years, and she will never fail to show up for the people she cares about. Being pregnant and having a strong emotional attachment to the name you've picked out for your daughter is completely understandable, and her pregnancy was pretty rough on her moods. She once wept uncontrollably at a cat food commercial when she was about seven months pregnant. I also think my approach for trying to explain the name issue those years ago was very clumsy, and I could have done a better job of bringing it up. That said, with the distance of time, I am really glad I did broach the topic. I feel like I owed Stephanie that information, and I can feel good about giving it to her. If I'd chosen not to bring it up at the time, I think I'd have a lot of regrets now. The only thing I'd change now, looking back, is that I would try to bring it up more gently somehow with Stephanie so I could have had the chance to explain. In summary, all is well. We've run into a little bump in the road with other kids' reactions to Carrie's name, but in some ways, it's better to get this out of the way now, when Carrie doesn't really understand what's happening, than have this happen in kindergarten or elementary school down the road, when full-on bullying could be a risk. She's adjusting really well to going by her nickname full-time, and Stephanie and her husband are planning on enrolling her with Carrie as her preferred name in all future schooling. And since schools around here go by preferred name, rather than legal name in things like classroom roll calls, it's possible she can get through K-12 without it ever really being widely known among her peers that her legal name is Karen. And I really hope this common usage of the name Karen dies down in the next few years. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day. AITA for refusing to apologize to my boyfriend's mother? I've been dating my boyfriend, who's 32 for just over two months now, and we recently made things official. Everything has been going really well, and he's been amazing. Since it's still a new relationship we haven't met each other's families yet. Last night after he got out of work, I came over and we had a nice night in. He works in the so obviously he likes to keep it low-key after a shift, which I am totally fine with. This morning after we woke up and enjoyed a little morning in bed I offered to make coffee for us. I tossed on a tank top and was in the kitchen making it when I hear his front door opening. I freak out, freeze for a moment in panic and see the face of some women. That's why I go into flight mode and ran as fast as possible into the bedroom. I'd just swear I moved like Usain Bolt from that kitchen. I threw door shut behind me and shouted to my BF that a woman just entered his apartment. He looked so confused but went out to see what is up. A minute later I heard raised voices for maybe three to four minutes, no idea how long because I was still so shocked, then a door slamming. So my boyfriend hurried in and was apologizing like crazy. He started explaining that his mom had decided to let herself in with the key she had for emergencies only or to feed the cat if he was away etc. She claims she had texted him letting know she was swinging by because she was in the area and wanted to drop something off. His phone was on, do not disturb, because we were sleeping and such. I was mortified because I had never met his mom as things are still new, and this was her first impression of me. I'm not exactly sure how much she saw as it is all such a blur, but either way it's not good. He said he demanded his emergency key back from her and told her to get out. His phone then begins to blow up with angry texts. She was demanding an apology from me, and apparently had some less than nice things to say. She also let him know she doesn't ever want to meet me unless I give her a sincere apology for my behavior. He let her know that wouldn't be happening, and that it was her that owed us both an apology, as she overstepped invading his privacy. I just want to pretend this never happened. He reassured me we are fine, and that he was putting her in a time out of sorts. I don't want his mom to hate me, but he is adamant that she isn't owed an apology because she is at fault. Would I be the offer not apologizing? The good, 
My relationship is better than ever, this messy event actually made us closer, and made my complete trust in him solidified. He has joked about the ridiculousness of the situation, trying to make me feel better and not ashamed. He jokingly said now I can just walk around totally naked haha. I can't remember if I mentioned in the comment replies, he got the locks and code changed. The crazy, since he put her on a timeout and silenced his mom's calls and messages, she's attempted to reach him from his dad's phone. His dad wasn't aware or pleased with that. Then up the ante by calling him at work. Which fortunately when you work in the air you can't just be reached unless it's a major emergency. So she left a message for him to call her back, which he didn't. He double-checked with his dad to make sure everything was okay though. Next, since that tactic didn't work she showed up at his place when he wasn't home because she doesn't know his schedule currently and guess what? She was floored she couldn't get in. I guess she assumed he wouldn't change his code and did have an extra key made. Shocking, huh? The sarcasm duly noted. So in conclusion she went home had a massive tantrum slash meltdown and apparently spent two days crying in bed. This according to the dramatic email she wrote. Oh and she can't eat either her last message, a handwritten letter sent via mail requesting that we all meet up to clear the air and formally meet. He sent her a quick text letting her know the more she pushed the longer he is taking time away. So, it has been radio silence for almost two weeks. Yay. Just a side note, people warned me that I should reconsider being with my boyfriend because this is what our future will be. He has shown me that even in our few months together he won't tolerate anyone mistreating or disrespecting me. He has a spine and is a very amazing man and partner. Okay, so I finally met the mother. This weekend was my boyfriend's father's 70th birthday, and they were having a huge party for him. Obviously my boyfriend wanted me to come with him, things are still going insanely well despite the incident with his mother. She seemed to have finally accepted, she won't be making demands or dictating his behavior etc. She has been on her best behavior but we have avoided a meet up with just her because I knew that would be weird and I honestly want to pretend what happened slash what she may have seen didn't happen. Yeah rug sweeping like a grown up. We have been together for about 6 months at this point so I mean it was time to meet the parents, he has met mine already, and we are already using the word love. We decided that me attending the party with him would be a good neutral ground and she wouldn't bring up the incident in front of guests. I mean how could that conversation have gone? Hey nice to meet you, sorry you may have seen me half naked in your son's kitchen. Nope. Anyway the party was fun and there were a lot of people at the venue. His dad reminds me of him and is very nice. His mother, wait for it, embraced me in a huge hug. She went on and on about how she was dying to meet me. She wanted to introduce me to her friends and was almost overly sweet and complimentary. I think she was laying it on thick because of how our one and only non-meeting went. It was definitely obvious she didn't gossip about the incident because she was showing me off to her friends who apparently she had been sharing what little tidbits about me my partner had told her about me I smiled and pretended like it wasn't a bit awkward, but you would never have known that after the original episode this woman went absolutely insane. I'm keeping my guard up though. So I think for now we are good, and we never had to have a weird sit down. Will it eventually be brought up someday? Who knows I am comfortable with where things are. Oh, and just a side note because I don't I mentioned this in my prior post, one of the reasons she was apparently so upset was she said to my boyfriend that I looked so young. I was 25 at the time, now 26, and he's 32. I have heard prior that I do look young for my age and always get caught for everything. I think she was assuming the worst, but our age difference is totally normal. Well that's it Reddit, I think we are in a decent place, and this didn't end up being a total catastrophe. Sometimes things on Reddit don't divorce, an unexpected pregnancy with twins or someone wearing white to a child-free wedding. Thanks for the input from those I interacted with. I'm glad it didn't mess everything up. I know it is generally best to deal with matters head-on, but I think this is a situation that is okay to pretend her seeing me didn't happen. He handled the issue with her invading his privacy and overstepping. That's all that matters really. And in a shocking twist from most Reddit posts, no one rallied the troops to get involved. Top comment. One person commented. It's too late, she already hates you. But don't worry, she would hate any woman your boyfriend is with. OOP. Ugh, he did mention that she keeps in contact with his ex-girlfriend and her mother, 
so I'm not sure if that is a factor she seems to be quite conservative, and was pressuring him to marry the ex and give her grandkids. I only know that part because he was upfront when we first started dating that he didn't want kids. I don't either, and we commiserated over the pressure. Another person commented. Ah, uh, he's not going to change. I know you are smitten with him, but huge red flags. It's not going to get better. I mean, she's harassing the ex-girlfriend about not giving her grandkids. You are nah, but I would run away as fast as I could. Pretty soon you'll be the ex she's harassing. It's so much easier said than done, especially coming from some random stranger. OOP. Oh no, she is friends with the ex and her mother, which he isn't happy about. The ex didn't want to break up, and it sounds like his mom was campaigning for them to stay together or get back together, at least in the past if not the present. She was harping on him about grandkids despite knowing he doesn't want them, she feels he owes her. He actually plans on getting the snip. AITA for taking my daughter to Disneyland while pregnant? I'm a 28F, and I recently went on vacation to Disneyland with my 5-year-old daughter and my husband 29M. We wanted to have one last trip together before our family grows to 4, as I'm 7 months pregnant and our baby boy is due soon. We thought it would be nice to spend some quality time with our daughter before her little brother arrives. When I was 13 my mom, dad, and little brother went on a Disneyland vacation. It was fun until my dad left his phone in the hotel, and they wouldn't return it to us. He had to get a new one, and my parents were so upset that we never went back. I thought this was irrational since it was my mom's favorite place. We went there at least once a year while growing up. After that whole ordeal, my mom hated it. So, when my husband and I wanted to have a vacation before the baby arrived, we decided to go to Disneyland for about three days. My daughter loves princesses and the idea of magic so when we told her about it, she was overjoyed. While we were at lunch together I told my mom we were going on a trip, and when I mentioned it was Disneyland, she was enraged. I was baffled because I honestly thought she had forgotten about the whole incident. She called me a backstabber and used some really vulgar language. She stormed out of the restaurant, and I paid and left a few minutes later. A few hours later, my dad called me and screamed, This family doesn't go to Disney. If you weren't such a spoiled little B-word, you would understand that. I was shocked. It was my money I was spending, and I thought everyone was over. My mom texted me a long paragraph saying she would go no contact and wouldn't be my mother anymore if I still went. The trip was fully paid for, so I responded, okay, I guess you only have a son now, and blocked her. I've gotten at least 60 calls from family and a few texts telling me I'm wrong. We still went and got back yesterday. We all had a blast and my daughter rode her first big girl coaster. She loved every minute of it. So, in my opinion, it was all worth it. Relevant Comments NTA, you're well within your rights to take your daughter on a holiday to a location you choose with your money. I feel like something else happened at Disney that you're not aware of to make your parents hate it so much. It seems totally irrational for her to act the way she is. Comment from OOP, I agree. I never thought about something bigger going on. I've heard stories where people leave stuff and never get it back, like dropping things on rides. I will unblock my mom and try to talk it out and understand what really happened. Edits slash updates. Edit 1. While I posted this around two hours ago, and I've gotten a lot of comments. First off, thank you for all the NTAs. I was kinda scared that I was going to get attacked. I think I will unblock my mom once I get home and ask if we can meet up. We haven't spoken since all this happened. Hoping we can meet up for lunch and talk. Also, I've been seeing a lot of comments where people think something way bigger happened. I can't remember anything else happening though, so I'm going to ask if and when we talk. I'll keep you all posted. By the way, I'm in Kali, and I don't get off work until 5pm 5, 30ish, so once I get off and get home, I will talk to my mom. I've seen a lot of people wanting an update, so I'll try to get one to you all soon. Edit 2, holy shit, lol, I truly didn't expect this to go viral. I'm getting ready for work, and just wow. So last night I unblocked my mom, messaged her, and basically said, I wanna talk, I know that our last fight was really messy, but I wanna meet up for lunch and talk. She responded. 
she said yes, and we're meeting up today. My dad is also coming because I want him to apologize for what he called me. I honestly can't even process the phone call that happened. I want to get answers as fast as possible because I've seen so many comments saying this wasn't over a phone. I have really bad memory, and this was 15 years ago, but I remember most of it because that whole situation was very messy. I will definitely be updating you guys after the lunch. I've also seen people saying my parents might not like Disney because they are more liberal. I don't think that's the reason though. 15 years ago was very different as well. I'll ask that when we meet up, but I don't see it as a real reason. I've also seen people saying it's very unreasonable to go no contact slash very limited contact because of this, which I agree with. I think she was just saying that to scare me, which is still very gross. But we still went, and she messaged me back, so I guess we will just see. My husband might also come with me because I don't know how my parents will react when I ask them my questions. They know we still went, so I'm not too scared, but I can't be sure. I'll update with how the lunch goes soon. Final update. Well, here it is, folks, your final update. Around 1 p.m. yesterday we went to lunch. My husband didn't come because he had an important meeting at work. I wasn't too scared anyway because we were going to a pretty popular restaurant, so it wasn't like I would be alone with them. We got there and sat down. I started talking to my mom and dad and asking my questions. It was mostly, why would you get so mad, and it's my money, and I wanted to make sure my daughter had a fun vacation with her parents before she has a brother. I was met with them gaslighting me and thinking that because they don't love Disney I can't go. I was on the verge of tears and leaving. So, I asked my final question that I really want an answer to. This can't be over F seeking phone, there has to be something going on to make you blow up like this. They then told me what really happened. So, my dad did leave his phone. When housekeeping went to clean the room for the next family to arrive, the cleaning woman took the phone and brought it to Lost and Found. She saw my mom's contact on my dad's little smartphone and called her, and we went to pick it back up. But the woman also saw another contact that said baby. My dad was cheating for a good year to a year and a half. She told my mom and my mom blamed that woman for ruining her marriage by telling her. That's why they hated Disney, it ruined their marriage. I walked out after that, I didn't pay either. I don't think I'm going to talk to them after this, only if my daughter and son want to. They betrayed my trust and never apologized either for what they called me a few days ago. I don't know why we never got the phone back, and I probably will never know. But here is the official ending of this crazy ass story. Relevant comments. OP. Honestly, I didn't see this coming at all. I know there must be a better explanation, but I never expected it to be an affair. And the fact that they're blaming Disney for the dad's cheating is just wild. There are plenty of valid reasons to hate Disney, but cheating at one of their parks isn't one of them. One person commented. Yeah, I don't think Disney is responsible for the dad stepping out of his marriage. You can blame the mouse for a lot of things, but not that. I might be reading too much into this, but when I hear about the family suddenly hating Disney, I can't help but think something bad happened in their marriage during a vacation, and now Disney is just tied to those bad memories. Another person commented. And even then, why is the whole family on this revenge kick now? Did going to Disney suddenly make them all uncontrollably unfaithful? Did they each get assigned an affair partner at the gate when they received their wristbands? That aside, ah, uh, your reveal really got me thinking about some crazy theories and I'm glad it was just this. I was picturing a phone being discovered, filled with stuff that would make you call the FBI. AI today? For telling my mom and baby brother that they ruined my summer? I'm a 16-year-old who graduated high school in June. Yes, I graduated early. My mom is currently 8 months pregnant, and she had my half-brother, Ben, in October 2021, so he's almost 2. My 14-year-old brother, Sam, spent the summer with our dad, who lives 8 hours away, and just got back 2 days ago. Since my stepfather works during the day, it's mostly just me, my mom, and Ben at home. I take care of Ben in the mornings for about 2 hours, I feed him breakfast, change his diaper, and play with him. I also make my mom coffee and breakfast while she sleeps in. She usually wakes up around 9, 30, eats breakfast, 
and then I take the dog for a walk. When I get back, I put Ben down for his nap, and during that time, my mom plays on her PC. When Ben wakes up, I make his lunch, and my mom feeds him. Then, I have to take him outside for a walk and water the plants. I'm also the one fetching whatever my mom needs since she can't go up and down the stairs easily. On top of all this, I've been taking two online classes and caring for a sick dog. With Sam gone, most of the household chores fell on me, and it's been a lot to handle. Despite everything, I never complain. But lately, my mom has been really mean, maybe because of the pregnancy. It only takes her about five minutes after seeing me to start complaining about something I didn't do right. She constantly calls me lazy and compares me to other kids my age who have driver's licenses or jobs, things I want too, but I just don't have the time for because of all my responsibilities at home. This summer, I wanted to go to see my brother and dad just for a week because I miss them. My mom said no, because I had to take care of my dog. Fair, I guess. I used to go downtown to the library, and she said I can't go anymore because I didn't do insert chore, or she needs someone to help with Ben. Right. I wanted to take myself to the movies. No. I want to go to the fair with my brother Sam. No. Yesterday was college orientation. Not only did she text me while I was there complaining about me not telling her we ran out of dishwasher pots, but when I got home, she ranted at me for 20 minutes about how I always ditch my responsibilities. School starts tomorrow and I'm so exhausted and sad. I wanted this to be a fun summer. After yelling at me and then telling me to go buy dishwasher pots last night, my mom made me tell her what was making me so upset. I told her I wasn't ready to share it, but she threatened to take away my computer, which I paid for and also need for college, so I did. I told her I was tired of doing everything for her, that I felt underappreciated, and that she and Ben ruined my summer. She said she was more than capable of taking care of Ben on her own and sent me to bed. It's the next day and she won't talk to me. She also won't let me help with Ben. I am a little relieved because it's been a long time since I've had time to myself, but I also feel sort of bad. AITA? UP date. Basically, I'm a 16-year-old high school graduate and my pregnant mother is putting a lot of household responsibilities, including taking care of my 22-month-old brother on me. After reading your comments, I've realized a lot. I always knew my mom was a little verbally abusive, but you guys helped me see how bad it actually is. I am not supposed to have these many responsibilities at my age and my mom is trying to make me feel otherwise by manipulating me. Her mother is a narcissist worse than my own mom, if you can imagine, and extremely manipulative. Her father has AD and BPD, so I know for a fact she has inherited some of this behavior from them. Per your suggestions, I have decided to look into emancipation. In the meantime, I will get my things in order to be able to back myself up. I am looking for a job through my college and I am going to study to get my permit. If I am able to get my permit this month, I can have my license by February. I agree that I do need to get out of the house ASAP, but it will most likely be after the new baby is born, unfortunately. I'm also deciding where I should live. I'm leaning toward my grandfather because he lives on the other side of the country, and he is at least extremely supportive of me and won't expect me to be his slave. A lot of you wanted me to move in with my father, but I'm sorry to say he's not the savior you guys want him to be. He and my mother divorced when I was five, but we've never all been a family. I would see him maybe a few times a month, and now we speak once a month if that. He is by no means my dad, just a friend I check in with monthly who happened to get my mom pregnant. Here's what's happened since I posted. My mom kicked me out of my bathroom and is now making me share with my brother because apparently, I am not able to keep it clean. Mind you, everyone uses this bathroom, and she constantly tells me that it's not just my bathroom, but of course I am the only one responsible for cleaning it. She has found a way to control my devices through some app that uses Wi-Fi to control them. I've gotten three 15-minute rants about how irresponsible I am. I will no longer fight her and just stick to my plan of getting out of SAP. I've switched all my college classes to online as well so I can get up and leave when the time comes. I am done. Thank you guys so much for the support. Hopefully when you hear from me again I'll be out of this house. I want to be a lawyer, I know I can do it. Who knew I could get so much support from Reddit? Update 2 So I have some good news I guess. I am free to go. My mom got pissed at me today because I was taking care of my dog and my baby brother at the same time and I forgot to fully clean up after my dog. 
I've been really stressed lately and I guess it just slipped my mind to go back to clean up because I was with my baby brother and then I took him to his bed to sleep and I went to my computer to start schoolwork. Anyway, I was unloading the dishwasher about an hour later, and she saw that my dog's toys were where I left them and got really mad at me. So, I cleaned up and found her in my room. She then complained about how there was a cup in my room, nothing but water is allowed in bedrooms, I had water in the cup, and also that my baby brother's food pouch was under my bed. I didn't know his pouch was there, but he often goes into my room while I'm not in there so that must be why it was in there. She kicks me out of my room and tells me that I can only keep what can fit in a luggage and everything else of mine, she will give away. So now, I don't have a room, I sleep in the living room on an air mattress. I tried to call my grandmother to ask if I could stay with her for a while, but she didn't answer. About ten minutes later, she asked me what was wrong with me, and I let it all out. Not like last time, though. I told her and she specifically is the reason for all of my stress and that she makes me feel bad about myself. She actually apologized and gave me a hug and said it was because she's pregnant. She asked why I called my grandmother, they're not on good terms right now, and I told her that I wanted to move out and take my dog with me of course. She was fine with it. Like, a little too fine. She didn't even ask why I wanted to go, she didn't even say she needs to talk it over with my stepfather, she just said I can go. I'm very happy but a little conflicted. I know I need to go, but I keep thinking about my brothers. How much she'll struggle with two babies by herself. She actually seemed like she felt bad when I told her how the way she was acting made me feel. I will go, I know it's right choice regardless of my doubts. I'm going to my grandmother's now because she lives in the same city as my dad, eight hours away, a big city and it's easier. Meanwhile, I'll get a job and talk to my grandfather about me moving in with him. I think he will be open to it, he always wants me to visit and he's extremely supportive. I know it's not the biggest update, but I feel like getting her permission to go was the part I was most afraid of and I have it so, I wanted to share. AITA for giving my husband the silent treatment after he wore a shirt his work wife gave him. I'm in my 30s and have been married to my husband, who's also in his 30s for five years. In the past year he started a new job where he shares his role with a co-worker named Chelsea, who's in her 20s. I've noticed that Chelsea has been increasingly pushing my comfort boundaries, and honestly, I just don't trust her. I've known Chelsea and her family for years, even before I got married, and I wasn't too fond of her back then either. She says and does things that, while not necessarily malicious, feel a bit off, almost like she's trying to act as a second wife to him. It's not that I'm insecure about her, but I do find her behavior creepy. She once told me she sees my husband as a brother, which annoys me because she has a great brother, and I'm actually friends with him. Chelsea frequently calls, texts, and FaceTimes my husband about both work and personal matters, and I've even heard someone refer to her as his work wife. Unfortunately, my MIL passed last month, and it has been utter hell. In the midst of grief, Chelsea texted asking how my husband was doing and how she cries every day thinking about him and had told me that she knows exactly what I'm going through, no she doesn't, and that she can't wait to give my husband a huge hug. Fast forward a little bit, and she was drunk at a party and saw my husband leaving, where she confronted him on why he was leaving. He told her, I didn't think I had to tell you what I'm doing resulting in her panic texting him after to make sure they were okay and trying to get him to talk to her by saying, you can open up and talk to me or vent or just tell me to a few. Strange to me. There's been more instances but I know I have a limit. Anyways, his birthday was last week, and she called him asking his shirt size, and she made it a point to let him know she'll never forget his birthday. Like why are you so creepy sometimes gf? Yesterday. I'm cleaning the kitchen when he walks in, and I notice it's an unfamiliar shirt. I asked if it was new, and he said, Chelsea got it for me, and my blood boiled. Instant rage and I went quiet. He asked if I cared and I remained silent and walked away. I'm usually a huge communicator, but his mom just passed and he asked for no drama, and I'm trying my hardest to respect that, but I know I have zero patience and want to tell him it's effing weird how involved a co-worker is trying to become in his life and she needs to back down and focus on her own engagement. Everyone I talk to says I'm not in the wrong and she's being creepy, but I feel bad for ignoring my husband and walking away from him. I saw he looked upset and confused, but I know he's already overwhelmed with grief and don't want to make things worse. 
Update. Okay, we have news. So just to clarify some things first, for some additional background. One, I have known Chelsea and her family prior to my marriage through some mutual connections, and her family being very, very close with my ex and his family, hence some hesitancy. I became close friends with her brother, and he became a part of my group of friends, etc., etc. She did not meet my husband until they both started working for the same company. So, I was not very close with Chelsea, but we always saw and interacted cordially. Two, I did not tell Chelsea his shirt size. She called my husband and asked him his shirt size, where he told her. I would have never told her his size and would have made some jokes saying that he has enough shirts and not to bother buying him anymore. Three, I wish I added this in earlier, but my husband and I have had conversations about my feelings regarding Chelsea and her behaviors. I've tried everything from being sweet, aloof, concerned, and outright angry. Each time I've been met with some variation of he understands, but Chelsea is neurotic. He never dismisses my feeling outright, but he attempts to be sensitive to her mental state and says that he has no issue stepping in if slash when necessary. However, I found it necessary, and it's clear he isn't trying to have the confrontation up until the shirt event. For my husband requesting no drama stems from a series of events that occurred within his family and work life that drained his emotional battery leading him to just ask for smooth sailing and finding his new normal. I do have a history of struggling to manage my anger during arguments, but I have taken the steps and done what is necessary to address my anger to make sure my marriage does not suffer, and we have been amazing. I did want to be mindful that what he has endured with family and other aspects of his life has impacted his mood, which led him to openly ask the universe for some peace and no drama, which made me internalize his message. Also, we are scheduled to have our first marriage counseling session this upcoming week, just to really make sure we iron out any issues, and wanted to make sure when I had my update that I had some juice and evidence of change to give y'all. As for the talk, it went amazing. I sat down with my husband and just told him that there were some things that I wanted to bring to his attention, and included a variation of what was in the comments along with my own words, to really drive home the fact that I'm beyond over my limit, and wanted him to have it on his radar. My husband was very attentive and validating. We talked for a while, and although there were moments where we both didn't seem to understand one another, we tried hard to use some fair fighting rules I've gotten from my therapist, and that really seemed to help. He gave me his point of view, and we talked about how my walking away made him feel awful, and how I was upset that he knew I would be mad seeing him wearing the shirt. He told me that she gifted him the shirt and was asked to go golfing with his friends after work, and it happened to be a golf shirt. His initial rationale was that everyone knows he loves to play, and didn't think the gift to be weird and thought why not wear it since he went to play. We did have a discussion about the attention she gave him, and how that can be addicting and slash or flattering, and what to do to fix that so if something similar happens again, he will think a little more, and come up with a better response to respect my boundaries and his. Fortunately, I did get to witness the text conversation. I will say he has always been very open with his phone and chats, and I did see the series of texts as they happened in real time when she was bombarding him with messages. I won't ever ignore the possibility that he could have a role in this as well and I believe that anything that's done in the dark eventually comes to light. I will have to bring up the topic of HR again today if he doesn't present any updates. We did talk about it previously, and he was very open to it after seeing her reaction lately, but I haven't heard anything since. And that talk took place on Monday. I made sure to accept my role in this situation, and he was able to do the same. Turns out that my husband has already had a chat with Chelsea and put her in her place post my reaction. Leading Chelsea to then have a three-day temper tantrum and constantly seeking reassurance and validation from my husband. In the form of texts and in-person harassment. My husband finally had enough and told her that if she didn't knock it off that he would pursue this through his chain of command and HR. That seemed to stop her in her tracks, sorta, where she then started to tell him that she was having troubles at home and my husband responded with, sorry to hear that, good luck with everything. She did not like this. He has since then put up some serious boundaries and we both came up with some ideas that we were both comfortable with and won't stress out his work environment more. I can't thank this community enough for helping me get my ass in gear.
for all comments, the loving and supportive, ugly and blunt, and the indifferent, I thank you all for taking your time to share your input. This could have possibly saved my marriage. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day.